These next two pages are to go over something called skeletal structures, at least our first attempt at uh, starting to understand skeletal structures. And uh, skeletal structures are something that you very commonly see um, when talking about larger molecules. And what I'm showing here is the skeletal structure for prednisone, a steroid. And you can see that there are very few atoms shown. And there are also some uh, uh, sort of lines that don't look familiar, perhaps. Um, and we'll start this uh, with skeletal structures and some basic understanding. We'll finish it in a future week. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of what we're going for eventually is to be able to understand all of the bonding and all of the intermolecular forces associated with this skeletal structure. Now, uh, skeletal structures, that's our title. And skeletal structures are also called line bond structures. And that's exactly what it's going to appear is a line is a bond. And, uh, but the, the take home message is going to be that there are a lot of carbon, hydrogen, single bonds and molecules that sort of clutter up Lewis structures and make them more complicated than they need to be, especially for larger molecules. So in skeletal structures or line bond structures, uh, don't draw carbon hydrogen bonds. And I guess the other main thing as we go through uh, skeletal, what I'll call skeletal structures uh, is that when you draw a uh, chain or a uh, line of carbon-carbon bonds, uh, you'll draw them so, uh, well, so draw carbon-carbon-carbon bonds with a bond angle somewhere between 109.5 and 120 degrees. One hundred nine point five to one hundred twenty degrees. And we'll talk about why those numbers uh, in a future lecture outline. But let's take a molecule that is uh, sort of big, but not too big, and that's going to be pentane. Pentane has five carbons, and uh, each of those five carbons, well, so it's got single bonds between the carbons, and then each carbon has four bonds total. So I've got one bond to another carbon. That means there are three bonds to H's. And that's typical of a carbon that's at the end of a chain of carbons or a line of carbons. Cent more central carbons uh, have two bonds to other carbons and then two bonds to H's. And then drawing in all the other H's, we see that pentane has a formula C5H12. And C5H12 fits the pattern CNH2N plus 2, which is the generalized formula, and those are Ns, um, for alkanes. But uh, uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to draw the skeletal structure where we don't draw the carbon-hydrogen bonds and we draw carbon-carbon-carbon bonds with a bond angle between 109 and 120. Approximately, nobody's measuring. It's going to go like this. When you put your pen or pencil down, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Something like that. This is the skeletal line-bond structure uh, for pentane. It's got one, two, three, four, five carbons. And it has all those hydrogens, but we're just not showing them. And uh, so it's much simpler. It does show some of the nature of the carbon, carbon, carbon bonds, which again, we'll discuss soon. And then it just makes it much easier to uh, think about um, 
uh, drawing things like uh, isomers. Uh, for example, another isomer would, instead of drawing five carbons in a row, and if you remember isomers, so same molecular formula, different bonding pattern. So at least one of these bonds has to be broken. And I'm going to break this one and reattach it in a different place. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four carbons. And this fifth carbon over here, I'm going to attach it in the middle. This is uh, also C5H12, as is this C5H12. And anyway, so starting to think about uh, different molecules, um, we can prove that this is C5H12 because it has five carbons and all the carbons are connected by single bonds, it must, but uh, each carbon, let's fill it in, and I'll draw it approximately to the shape. There's our five carbons, and one, two, three hydrogens. This carbon has two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. This carbon has three bonds, so it only needs one. And continuing, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Those are isomers. And uh, from there, we'll start doing, uh, let's see, uh, we'll draw the one other isomer of C5H12. One, two, three, four, five. This is another isomer. So these are the three isomers of C5H12. Now on the next page, we'll talk about functional groups and how to represent functional groups in uh, skeletal structures. And functional groups, uh, we've talked about what they are, and two of the most important ones are carboxylic acids. Uh, those form weak acids, or those are the weak acids. Those have the COOH group in them. And let's draw, uh, how about one, two, three, four, five. We have five carbons. And then double bond O, OH. So if we were to count carbons here, then the first carbon is right here. Two, three, four. This molecule has five carbons. It has an O and an OH where typically it is connected to the O, and then the O is bonded to the H. That means each oxygen has two bonds. This is our first double bond, which is two lines. Um, now let's go to an alcohol group. And for an alcohol group, it's just OH. One, let's do one, let's start up top. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we might do OH. This point of right next to the O is not a carbon. The first carbon is here, then two, three, four, five, six. And again, I'm not being too careful about the exact bond angle. I guess maybe anywhere uh, slightly more than 90 to 120 is fine for these. In fact, these are single bonds, and we'll talk. Uh, uh, single bonds rotate, uh, double bonds are rigid. I'm trying to think if there are any other uh, functional groups that we need to know about. Um, well, and the important thing is an H bonded to an O, you do draw, I guess an H bonded to an N, uh, one, let's see, you can draw as well. This is a cool molecule because it kind of looks like a bat and it has uh, nitrogen bonded to three carbons on one uh, chain and three carbons in another chain, both of those attached to the nitrogen. Uh, for skeletal structures, you don't have to draw 
all of the pairs of electrons. Remember, for Lewis structures, you do draw all pairs of electrons, but for skeletal structures, they're really a shorthand notation. And if you were to draw the full Lewis structure, then this oxygen has two pairs of electrons, this nitrogen has one pair of electrons, and these two oxygens each have two pairs of electrons.